So that boat, as you can see up under the bridge, is the fellow Fisher Lawyers. Cocker and the boys uh, opening up a nice little break now. As we were saying, they need to win these next two races and uh, they've set themselves up to do that. Howie, on the other hand, shouldn't be too perturbed to be in second place because uh, strategy, if you're working the strategy, which I'm sure he's doing, is that's all he has to do. He's got a nice little break on uh, second place in the regatta, which is his old mate Johnny Winnie in the end do. You can see Woody... Uh, quite a distance behind and Harry's around, job set as per usual and shoot will go up and they're just doing a really nice job as they have the whole regatta. Shoot now on and they're away. So the only thing Harry needs to worry about is that he keeps the mask pointing at the fog and not let it fall over because that'll ruin his uh, whole regatta if he lets that happen. So that's it, it's uh, ending up a bit of a procession in this race. Uh, it's we wanted uh, Grant Rollison to stay in it, but he couldn't oblige us. And in fact, it, we did we did see him go ashore with a broken prodder. So two poles in two days. Uh, poor old Grant, but uh, that's how it happens sometimes. So off they go. They're on their approach now to the gate mark for the last time. Cocker going into the job. He's given himself a pretty good angle back, and Harry will do something quite similar. And John Winning, I think, will do exactly that. Um, He'll just have to hold, keep his gunpowder dry for the last race to see what can happen then. So if everybody stays afloat, this will be the order. Uh, Coco, Howie and Woody. We'll turn the camera back on when we go through the gate. So here comes our leader. Trent Barnabas, Aaron Lynx and Coco on the wheel. Back on board for the last two days and uh, just driving over, take the mark. Through the gate they go. And he just needs all the, as we were saying just before, he's just got to keep afloat and get two bullets. That's the best he can do. He can't do any better than that. So he's on his way to doing that. And Howie Hamlin, he knows all he's got to do is finish second on the racetrack now because his other problem is John Winning, who's comfortably astern of him. So all they've got to do is just keep their minds on the job and not get too uh, lazy or or just fall for any tricks out there and keep it upright. So that's our race. We'll just cut from this. Uh, the rest of the chases are well adrift now, uh, back in the fog towards the bridge, but we'll come back to you at the bottom turn mark and see you standing down there. This is interesting. John Winning was third through the gate and uh, you can see him on a hot one there. The other two boats, the other leaders have jibed off as per normal and gone straight out. You can see Woody just rolling over the top of Coco in the distance, but this is what can happen, and it got Woody a pretty good lead going down in those, well, particularly that first race yesterday in race seven, and he was able to pick up some good slants, and he had his bow pretty much pointing at that bottom mark by coming into this shore, so this could uh, heat up between him and Howie at that bottom mark. Uh, Woody on the move here. So we've got the camera on uh, our leader, Thurlow Fisher Lawyers, setting up to uh, jibe and come into that Alcatraz turn mark. And uh, this is where you've got to keep your eyes on your fries here because one little slip up, it's quite fresh down there. It's up towards 20 knots, we think. And uh, Coco's got the boom over. And I'd say he's already pulling that shoot off it. And he's safe by the look of it. So Coco's... Comes around and he's aiming back at this uh, finishing line. So that's our leader all the way at the moment, except for Grant Rollison's little uh, attempt at leading this race up there, in the first rounding. And Howie Hamlin has removed his chute and he's just going to jibe to come back. So Howie's looking rock solid, just going to do this jibe, but probably the last dangerous manoeuvre. And around he goes. So, uh, does he? Looks like he's a bit slow there. No, he's got it back together. So around comes Howie. Looking good. And Johnny winning, probably overcooked that uh, last jibe angle in and he's had to pearl his shoot. So a little bit of, um, bit of glory on the way down there, but he's probably just got a little bit tight to that mark now. So you can see he's got a reasonable difficult jibe coming up. He's pretty tight in on the mark, so he's got a Almost a 360-degree Jibberini coming up here. It's a big bear away. 
boom over, no problems. Round comes Woody. So that's our race, folks. On their way to the finish, and the rest of them, uh, Smeg is probably trying to get the better of uh, Graham Catley's Merck line, and so is uh, Alex Vallings, slowly but surely hauling up to uh, Graham in the CT Battens. So that's it for the last run down. We'll come back to you as they get towards the finish line. So we're back uh, at our finishing position. Robbie Dean's got the big shotty ready to roll. And Jessica's got <laughs> hands over her ears. I don't blame her. Gets the wax melting. And uh, Michael Coxon is on his way to take race nine, barring a major catastrophe here. He's only got about 50 metres to sail. If you come back onto him, uh, Oh, you want to get the gun going off? Yeah, good idea. Coco's going to win this. You don't need to be looking at him crossing the line. We'll just see Robbie. Robbie's bit of gun work here. Fire in the hole. Fire in the hole. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> That's loud. So there it is, Coco, all the way, except for little Grant uh, Rollison's little uh, run at the, the lead up there the first time. Coco takes the win. So since he's come back onto the boat, he's had uh, a third, a one, and a one. So Coco's back in the groove, but it could all be a bit late uh, for this regatta because the guy that's looking red-hot famous now is about to come across the line. That would be Howie Hamlin, Matt Noble and Paul Allen in the bow of this great little ship, the CST Composites, the USA team, and uh, they'll be pretty happy. That's, just, that's what they, well, they needed to go into this last race. They're still... Uh, that'll make them three points clear of... Um, Woody, so well done, <laughs> Howie, and uh, John winning, be probably a little bit disappointed, he uh, he didn't get the uh, result he wanted in this race, he needed a win, and probably put Coco between him and uh, himself, and that would have uh, moved him up probably into the lead, but that didn't happen, so it's all going to come down to the last race, and uh, this was all about staying afloat. You cannot win this regatta if you have a cap size, particularly the way the points are now going into the last race. So, interestingly, the pick the speed is... Uh, we've got some... Uh, I'll come back to you with those uh, attempts and let you know who's high and who's low for the day's activities today. Hang on. So yeah, I just wanted to tell you uh, how you were, how our entries were looking for the pick the speed. We had a a low of um, a 16.7 for Yandu, which was ended by Simon Scamell, and uh, to a high of uh, Nacho Campos, our friend over in um, Spain who follows our competition. So Nacho has gone for a highest, he's gone the highest speed for 22.9 on Johnny Winning's Yandu. So that's what we're looking at. We'll. Uh, We'll wrap all that competition up, obviously, at the end of the next race, and we'll go into the, We'll put the winner of today's pick the speed into the hat, and we'll see who gets the pro start, the Velocitech pro start. We'll come back to you for the start of the final race and uh, set it all up for you then. Back to you soon.